All of you must be willing to obey completely those who rule over you. There are no authorities except ones God has chosen. Those who now rule have been chosen by God. So when you oppose the authorities, you are opposing those whom God has appointed. Those who do that will be judged. God instituted this government. This is part of his plan. Those leaders aren't just there for a whim. They're there because God has a purpose here. So when you are going against them, when you're trying to break laws, when you're trying to go against the, the, uh, the laws and policies that are part of God's plan, you are actually fighting against God. I think what uh, St. Paul was talking about was uh, the law of Christ. And as I remember the law of Christ, as was formulated in John's Gospel, is love one another as I have loved you. Or another formulation of the law is love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I'm not sure that that's the law that Greg is applying and that should be uh, the, t the, the criterion or the test. He somewhere or other identified the law that St. Paul is talking about with local ordinances or with uh, rules uh, made by society, the federal government, whatever. Uh, I didn't believe that, um, you know, that I think obeying civil law is a civic duty, but I don't believe that's what St. Paul was talking about. And I think, in fact, uh, St. Paul would want us to uh, disobey the laws of the land if they were in violation of God's law. Uh, that uh, even uh, very good laws uh, need to be seen as good because they are good, not because they're laws, but because they are protective of values. But there are certain laws that are um, not in accordance with uh, human rights and justice. And when that's the case, we should, in a democratic society, work to reform the laws. And that's why our Catholic bishops are saying that the issue of immigration isn't obedience to the law, but the issue is comprehensive reform of existing laws. Uh, so when I hear this thing about um, making a major distinction between legal and illegal, you kind of idolize existing law, which most people see as inadequate. And, and not reflective of American values as they currently exist. What would you like to see, you know, citizens in these communities do? You know? uh, I would like them to uh, uh, redirect some of their energies uh, toward neighborhood issues, uh, which in some t situations may be the root causes of some of their concerns and organize around those neighborhood questions. So I would love to think that all this hubbub about immigration policy in Northern Virginia might lead uh, to a renewed commitment all over the place to deal with the issue of neighborhoods and affordable housing. Uh, that we don't have adequate housing for the workforce in Arlington, Fairfax, you name it. And uh, when you don't have adequate housing, that's affordable, um, people do crowd. Uh, if it costs um, $1,500 to rent an apartment and you don't have $1,500 a month coming in in your, uh, in your pay, you double up. And, uh, and so I would think dealing with an underlying issue like affordable housing would be a, a very positive move and to channel some of that energy toward developing new strategies for affordable housing.